Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today we want to talk about levels of English A1, B2, C1. Or in the IELTS exam they sometimes look like 5.5, 6.5, 7, 8 or 9. These labels or levels are not there to punish you although sometimes they're not used correctly. For administration and classification purposes, there has to be a way to define your level of English. But that level of English should never be used to hurt you. For example, if I say that your English is A1, then you may be going away and living that A1 badge. Oh, the teacher says I'm A1, so I won't look at any B1 material. The teacher says I'm only A1, so it's very important that I study A1 and less material. But that's not what the teacher said. The teacher said that in talking to you for 10 minutes or however long it was, that your English in speaking sounded A1. But it could well be that you just didn't show me the best of your English. To show me the best of your English takes a lot of effort. I'd expect to hear comparatives, conditionals, past, present, future. For example, what's your favourite book? My favourite book is blah blah blah, it is very good. What have you shown me there? You've shown me vocabulary, but you've only shown me the present tense. So, if you turn that into a story, Oh, my grandmother gave me a great book last year. She used to say that I couldn't put it down. I remember the blue cover very well. The book was all about a girl living on a farm. It was called Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. And compared to other books, uh, this one I liked particularly. So you can see the difference there. In the last example, uh, you were using comparatives, reported speech, descriptions, and it's a much better way of showing me the best of your English. So labels are not always true. Labels do not always reflect your English. Also, they can be used abusively. A teacher might tell you, oh, you'll only be one, so you need to have more lessons with me. An English school may try to tell you that you're less than your current level just so they can get you into a full class rather than creating a class just for you at your level. There's other things to consider as well, such as our own insecurities. Some people go to fortune tellers and they ask questions like, who will I marry? And the fortune teller says, oh, well, in 2025, you will marry a tall, dark stranger. So suddenly you put your life on hold. You stop dating because you know that the man isn't coming till 2025. And you begin to prepare for that. And you do that because you believed what that fortune teller has told you. So you've closed yourself down to any other opportunities. Likewise, in language learning, if a teacher or examiner tells you your level is B1, then it's closing you down to learning. It's closing you down and stopping you moving forward. You could be more than B1. As I mentioned, I was talking to a student a few days ago, and I told her that her level was C1, and she told me I was lying. So she already had some preconceived idea about what her English is or looks like. And because my view didn't fit into that, of course, I had to be the one who wasn't telling the truth. So you see, labels can be very damaging and very hypnotic. And you must be very careful not to take them too seriously. It's true that you can get a very rough idea of your level by doing an exam twice or three times. But remember, these things are very political and we are not robots. So it's not always possible to put you in a box and label it.
from my experience, you know your English better than everyone. And therefore, whatever way you label yourself is your choice, not an examiner's or a teacher. But a teacher could maybe say, well, somewhere around intermediate, upper or lower, or somewhere around C1. That would be much more honest and gives room for growth. But if anyone comes along and says, you're A1, you're B1, without any further discussion, I think I would be looking for a new examiner or a new teacher. Uh, anyone who claims to be able to tell your level after a short conversation uh, probably isn't doing his job very well. Unless, of course, it's Harry Potter teaching English. That's it for me today. That's all I wanted to say. Be very careful of labels because they can pull you down as well as your studying and your English. Look for things which motivate you. Don't look for things which hold you back. See you.